Hi, how are you? I'm Mr. Muso. Today we are talking about slave trade and legitimate trade. But now, for now, we want to talk about legitimate uh, trade. What transpired, what took place during this period of legitimate uh, trade. Today we are so privileged because we have got a special guest. Our special guest for today is none other than the Jews of Africa, Charlene Chikomo. Really is the Jews of Africa because he, he has been unpacking, uh, justifying us about slave trade. And now he is going to justify us. He is going to unpack about what transpired during legitimate a trade. So I'm waiting for Mr. Charlene Chikomo, the Jews of Africa, to come so that I could invite him and uh, he tells us about legitimate a trade. What is it that transpired? What's, what is it that took place during this period of legitimate a trade? the period of legitimate uh, trade. So, we want to unpack again this period of legitimate trade. What is it that is during this particular period of time, the period of legitimate trade? I'm trying to add Mr. Cialini here so that he could become part of us so that he could join us so that he could join us i'm here okay mr shalin mr shalin mr shalin good morning yes Good morning. How are you, Mr. Chalin? Ah, I'm good. We are big again. We are big again. You are justifying us now. Eh? Justifying us <laughs> about slave trade. Now you want to justify us again about legitimate trade. What took place during this particular period of time? Why was it called legitimate? Legitimate trade. What is legi? You explain to us in detail about legi legi so that we can learn, we can know more about what took place during this particular period of time. Possibly, again, for those who are just joining us, we can introduce yourself so that people can know you. Uh, and after that, now you uh, uh, what, uh, explain to us what took place during legitimate trade. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are, we are justifying. Uh, I am Shaling Prazin uh, Chikomo, well known as the Juice of Africa. The Juice means the leader. So, as a leader of uh, of the African youth, uh, African students, African learners, um, and uh, I'm a presenter for History and uh, FRS, mentored by the great man right here, Mr. Muso, who is my mentor, the man I respect so much, my father. Thank you very much for mentoring me actually to also come and become part of those who cross-pollinate ideas as historians. Thank you very much, Father. I appreciate it. Now, to, uh, cutting the long story short, because I think talking about Mr. Musa can take a year, let's uh, <laughs> zero into the topic of the day. Well, um, I think I was talking about slave trade, and now we are talking about uh, legitimate trade. So we are moving we are moving from slave trade to legitimate trade. Slave trade, mukadz wobutanga, warambu gagayenta. Legitimate trade, mukadz wejitu wawuya. So we now want to learn and take tea. Wakadza wakadza Now, slave trade was uh, banned in 1830. And I think I've explained in my first uh, presentation before the commercial break is what led to the abolition of slave trade. I explained what slave trade was all about. Now, legitimate trade. Uh, legitimate, we are talking about something legal, something acceptable, something, you know, permitted by the law, something that is fair, something that is just, something that is passed the justice test. Now, what do we talk about on the issue to do with the legitimate trade? What our students expected to know, of course, by our document, the curriculum, the updated curriculum. Number one, 
a student must be able to define what is legitimate trade must also be able to tell us what was this legitimate trade all about of which we shall do now you also supposed to tell us the problems associated with the transition from slave trade to legitimate trade and then after that the students are also are supposed to tell us what are the solutions that were put in place to deal with the problems associated with the transition from slave trade to legitimate trade last but not least students are also supposed to be able to tell us what are the states that managed to make a transition from slave trade to legitimate trade and what are those states that failed to do so and for those that fail why did they fail for those that succeed why did they succeed um now i want this topic so much mr muso first of all let me just encourage these students because since like, from the first time they released the new curriculum paper they've been asking here on the problems associated with the transition from slave trade to legitimate trade. So I want to touch it so nicely because I love that part. It's, the examiners love it. So we're going to make it clear. Now, legitimate trade, Mr. Musso, is no longer the uh, shipping of people, the manipulative exploitation of people. Legitimate trade is now, it now involves the growing of crops such as rubber, cotton, uh, gum trees, vegetables, a, a palm oils, a, and also mining to do with things like gold. Some will be doing groundnuts farming, but you are no longer selling human beings. You are now selling these products, these crops to European countries. Now, mm -hmm. as that was happening, uh, we know that the states in West Africa, some of these states were formed because of slave trade, because of selling human beings. Now, our issue is, so when the slave trade was banned in 1830, what were these states going to do to make sure that they make a transition from slave trade to legitimate trade? This was a, 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 not easy. It came with its own problems. So that takes us to, to the question, what are the problems associated with the transmission, transition? from slave trade to legitimate trade. Or since I can ask okay. this question like this, why did it took so long to ban slave trade? Or they can ask it as this, why did the slave trade continue up to the mid 19th century? Or they can do what they did in the specimen paper of the new curriculum, lack of a substitution was the main obstacle in the abolition of slave trade, or they can do simple as that, what are the problems associated? They can do that, why or assess, examine all that. I do Mr. Musa, and a good part in explaining to us the kind of questions that they can ask. Now, Mr. Musa, let's look at the problems. So we are saying we are moving from slave trade to legitimate trade. Now, what are the problems that we experience by the West African states? Problem by, by the West African states and those that were in Europe in abolishing a slave trade. Number one, lack of mechanical industrialization amongst other European countries. Now, let me explain this point clearly so that people can get it. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Musso, when I started to talk about the abolition of slave trade, I raised a crucial point when I said, Britain was the first country to be mechanically industrialized. But Mr. Musso, Britain is not the first country, that, that is not the first and only country that was involved in slave trade. France was there, Germany was there, Portugal, I mean, was there, South America was there, Brazil was there, but they were not yet mechanically industrialized. So as long as Britain was saying uh, mechanically industrialized, I no longer need slaves. France still need them. Portugal still need them. Brazil still need them. South America still need them. So the fact that other countries were not yet advanced in terms of industrialization, they still needed the slaves. And that led to the continuation of slave trade despite the fact that it was banned in 1830. That's why Cambridge History of Africa tells us one thing, Brazil only banned slave trade in the 1890s. 
but it was banned in 1830. Why? There was no replacement. They were not yet mechanically advanced. That's why we are told by historians that as long as demand was still existing, supply was needed. So the fact that other countries still needed the slaves, there was a need for supply. And that led to the continuation of slave trade. Hamukonikuti. So in this case, demand was there and business tells us that when demand is high, supply is also high. When demand is available, supply is available. Uh, supply is available. So the fact that uh, Britain was the only one who was working for the abolition of slave trade because it was advanced uh, 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 industrially, other countries were not yet. Other countries were still lagging behind. So slave trade continued up to the mid-19th century, despite the fact that it was abolished. Despite the fact that it was cancelled, it was stopped, it was declared an unjust thing in the 1830s by the Anti-Slavery Act. I think that point is clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, following you. Uh, good. Can you continue? Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, point number two, Mr. Muso, is what we call a resistance amongst the West African chiefs. Uh, no, before we go to point two, I just want to show students something on the first point that I said. Now, when Zimsek mm -hmm. says, lack of a substitution was the main obstacle in the abolition of slave trade. What on answer gap? Would the other countries were not yet mechanically industrialized, so they didn't have a substitute slave they had to continue. Can I this substitution to ever sub There was no replacement. So that's point number one you can use. Now, point number two is what we call resistance amongst the West African chiefs. Mr. Muso, uh, West Africa was a mixed bag of collaborators and resistors when it comes to the abolition of slave trade. So, <laughs> who accepted uh, Mr. Musa? Who accepted to ban slave trade in West Africa? We have a typical mm -hmm. example of the West African state called the State of Dahomey. That was under the leadership, the capable leadership of two kings called Gezo and Kilele. Those two accepted to ban slave trade. So that's why Dahomey is one of the examples of states that managed to make a transition from slave trade to legitimate trade. So if Zimsek asks you like what they did in this year in, in June to say that to ask why did the Daome and the Niger Delta states manage to make an effective transition from slave trade to legitimate question um, answer number one, the capable leadership of Geso and Kelele who accepted to shift while these other African leaders were refusing. But who refused? Because our focus on the problem is who refused, Mr. Musso. Uh, uh, we know, Mr. Musa, that is, although Gezo and Glele provided capable leadership and accepted to abolish slave trade, Mr. Musa, the single one who can go for example, the Boni chief, if not mentioned his name in all the books that I was, but it's called the Boni chief. Boni is a state, so he's a Boni chief. He said, slaves are easy to catch than elephants. It's a clear <laughs> indication that he was not interested in banning. Then we have got the ethic of Calabar, ethic, E-F-I-C, e ethic of Calabar, also uh, refused uh, to ban a, 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 a slave a, a, a trade. And the ethic of Calabar refused to ban slave trade. So what do we see here, Mr. Musso? We need to go back to the start of African history and understand the powers or that were accorded to the kings of the day. Number one, the kings were distributors of the land, they were judges, they were command, he was a commander in chief. Uh, but I want to speak to one thing that I was taught by my teacher in Form 1 about African kings, and that is his, his weight was the final say, just Louis, like Louis the Schistin of, of France in the French Revolution. <laughs> his weight was the final word, say. 
So if the king is not interested, what is going to happen to the people of that state? They were going to rally behind the weight of their king. So the lack of interest among African chiefs like the Boni chief who said slaves are easy to catch than elephants and the ethic of Calabar who was not interested in abolishing slave trade led to the continuation of slave trade up to the mid 19th century. But Mr. Musa, some historians might be asking, why would they refuse? Now, they were refusing, number one, because of fear of risking their economies. As I've said earlier, that what some West African states like Bonn were formed because slave trade was the backbone of the economy. Now, it was very difficult for them to accept the banning of slave trade because that was the backbone of the economy. You will want to make sure that you don't put the economy at risk. So that's why they refused and their people followed them. And that led to a problem in the abolition of uh, slave trade. Now, point number three. Point number three, legitimate crops, Mr. Muso, took time to mature or take time to mature. Uh, Mr. Muso, if we plant a gum tree today, we don't harvest it tomorrow. If we plant palm oils today, we don't harvest tomorrow. They are called perennial crops. They want five years, 10 years, or 12 years a, a, a to, to mature. So the question is, why is waiting for the maturity of the legitimate crops? What were African states surviving on? It's a question that needs to be answered by and a question that needs to be raised by any uh, well-informed historian to say, these are, uh, these are legitimate crops. Now, these legitimate crops are perennial crops, Mr. Muso. They take time to mature. They don't mature over a, a, a decade, over, over a month, or over a day, or over two months, or over. They want six months or more. They want, some of them want even 12 years for you to start harvesting. So now the question is, why is waiting for the maturity? What were the African states going to survive on? So the fact that these crops took time to mature, it made the Africans to continue with the slave trade as a replacement or as something to feed on. Why is waiting for the a, 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 a maturity of the legitimate crops? How they had to continue with the slave trade. That's why Cambridge Register of Africa, written by ECJ, it says that in the early of slave trade, the economy of Daome was coming from two sources. That is slave trade and legitimate trade, because Daome did not stop. There was no need to stop because people were going to die since slave trade was the backbone of the economy, and there was nothing to replace it when they banned slaves. So they had to continue while it's waiting for the maturity of the legitimate crops. A uh, point number three, mm. Mr. Musso, is a very crucial point that we say lack of uh, uh, favorable agricultural conditions. Mr. Musso, for you to sell a person or for you to sell slaves, you don't need fertile soils. You don't need good temperatures. You don't need favorable humidity. You don't need the, uh, okay. uh, anything relating to agriculture. So, Mr. Muso, you can see that the sale of human beings was a matter of power that we have. Do you have power to hunt for slaves? Yes, then you get them and you sell. But when it comes to legitimate trade, it was no longer a question of power. It was now a question of, is your soil favorable? Are the conditions favorable for you to do agriculture? So, some states, for example, immediately after the abolition of slave trade. Why? Because the soils of Asante were not favorable and the climatic were not favorable for the growing of palm oil trees, but it was not favorable for legitimate agriculture. For legitimate agriculture, it was not. And that uh, uh, led to the collapse of the state because agriculture requires proper agricultural conditions as opposed to slave trade, which was all about but legitimate now is changed. Legitimate now calls for a, you know, favorable uh, agricultural conditions, which were not there in many uh, uh, states. For, for those who study geography at advanced level, they know that when we talk about agriculture, we talk of what we call meteorological factors and geographical factors, where we talk about the land. Is, is your land suitable for what you want to grow? Is the climate suitable for what you want to do? So many states who, who survived the slave trade, they survived because slave trade had nothing to do with soil fertility. 
climatic conditions and all that. It was a matter of more longer as moon. We don't take us. We are new to climate. We are going to get that new to this. It is new to change. But legitimate now was a question of the availability of proper agricultural conditions, and they were not available. Bony, they were not. the legitimate era. Now, what else can, can, can be talked about? We talk also of role of religion. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Islam, unlike Christianity, didn't condemn a slave trade. That's why many Arabs were involved in slave trade. For example, Said, Said, and many West African states such as Yoruba and all that were Islamic states. So they didn't ban slave trade. So as you know, that Islam was a unifying factor in many African uh, uh, states. So on that note, religion also participated in making it difficult uh, to abolish a uh, slave trade. Another point, financial crisis on the side of Britain. Now we know that uh, Britain was at the forefront And said the slave owners for them to release the slaves. Number two, Britain was supposed to buy the anti slavery equipment. In this sense, we talk of the ships that were going to search for the slaves. Number three, Britain was supposed to pay the anti slavery team. Number four, Britain was supposed to make sure that the slaves are shipped back to the free town of Sierra Leone and Liberia. And that was very expensive. For Service out for them to locate those who were involved in the slave trade, making slave trade to continue up to the mid 19th century. And also, their anti slavery team was very small, ineffective, and uh, just you know, useless. And that led to the continuation of slave trade up to the mid 19th century. What else do you talk about? You also talk about the geographical location of West Africa. Um, uh, we are told that in West Africa, there were creeks and lagoons whereby the slave searchers would hide their ships, making it difficult for the anti-slavery team to locate them. And that led to the continuation of slave trade up to the mid 19th uh, 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 century. But also a, a crucial point that a student of history must raise is that there's a difference between the word slave trade and slavery. S slave trade is what we call the transatlantic slave trade, which is the shipping of people across the Atlantic from the West African states such as Dahomey, Asante, Calabas, Sokoto, Caliphate, Yoruba, land, oil, all these things, to European countries such as America. That's what we call transatlantic slave trade. Banned is not slavery. What was banned is just the destination. Because Britain here shifted the plantations from Britain and said, now you can do them in your own state. But still, the people of West Africa continued to use people, their own people, for free. So the banning of slave trade led to the accentuation of, of slavery. Because Chakango Chinja, Queen is about Britain, Queen is about France, Mabungo Shansa is free when you come in, you are going to go So at the end of the day, West African states ended up uh, perpetuating slavery. So what just changed, a student of history can argue that 
it is just a matter of terminology, a matter of which the terms are used, whereby slave trade is used to describe the shipping of people across the Atlantic to European countries from West African states. And slavery describes the use of people in that particular state. But a student of history must argue that it is just a matter of changing the destination rather than the characteristics of a manipulation. For example, you are now no longer going to Britain, you are no longer going to France, you are no longer going to Portugal, but you are being used in your own country for free. A good example is Daome. Daome is an inland state. It, it was, so, you know, in, is, let me say landlocked so that you understand, like Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a landlocked country. So if Zimbabwe, let's say Zimbabwe was involved in slave trade, they would have to carry their, was in, involved in legitimate trade whereby we were supposed to go and trade. It means Zimbabwe is saying that Shushayo, Yenjana Shogubi, Kusi, South Africa, which is on October Shindi. It's the same case with Daome. Daome being an inland area, they needed people to carry their legitimate goods from the state to the Cape. And Daome came up with a special group of boys called the Pula Boys, P U double L A boys. The Pula boys. Uh, we are not talking about the Pula in Botswana. We are talking about the Pula boys. The Pula boys. And some people or some students, my students, normally they say Pula boys. They are used to Zim dance or Pula, Pula. No, no, no. It's the Pula boys. P U W L A. The Pula boys. Who were the Pula boys? These were people from Daome that were responsible for carrying legitimate goods from the inland area to the near coast for selling. But those were slavery, though it was slavery because they were used for free, able-bodied men. But here we are getting a point. You know, uh, uh, that's why, that's why, that's why we, we, we talk about transportation. It was also another problem that led to the continuation of slavery. Why are we saying so? Transportation was a problem because slaves were easy to transport. Why? Because slaves, they walk by themselves to the coast. Slaves, they ship, they load themselves Slaves, they unload them. Kungwat Magomana, Fambay Tinde Busi, Quacher, 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 Woshika, Pindai Muchkepe, Wosh Peka Vega, Vashika, Udai Muchkepe, Chipilian Plantations. Asukatasapa and Richards, Panoya Sugar, Panaman and Tudana, Yam to Tunuri Sugar, both Sugar is to Tunuri. That's the same thing with yeah. legitimate crops. They needed carriages, people who can carry them to the coast because they cannot carry themselves. So, so some states that were in the inland area, transport became a problem. That's why. Many of the states that succeeded to make a transition from slave trade to legitimate trade are the Niger Delta states. Why? Because they were near two rivers, the Niger River and the Kwaubo River, whereby they were closer to the rivers and the, a proximity helped them to sell their things quickly, whereas the inland states suffered because they didn't have enough transportation. So, a, a missing muscle, these are... These are all problems that we are so that that um, uh, um, have made it difficult to make a transition from slave trade to legitimate trade. A, so a student can be asked why. from Europe side. Don't just focus on one thing there. A, 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 a. So that question, a, of all the papers that I've looked at so far that have been asked in the new curriculum, this is the only question examiners have been asking. There's no paper that they've changed from. They are here because they want you to know that they love this part. So I normally tell my students, so know that. With your permission, Mr. Musa, we can now look at the solutions. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the solution. Yes, I, I'm following everything. Okay. Now, uh, uh, if you look at the June paper that uh, the students wrote this year, they said, uh, why did Daome and the Niger Delta states manage to make a, a was success, was successful in making a transition from slave trade to legitimate trade? So we want to we'll cover that question, but I want to make sure that the students have an understanding of what we are talking so 
like I said, we have got states that managed to make a transition from slave trade and the states that failed to make that transition. Examples of states that failed are Asante failed, Boni failed, right? And we also have states that succeeded. Examples of states that succeeded are Taome succeeded, the Niger Delta states. What are the Niger Delta states? The Niger Delta states are Opopo, right? It's a Kireland. Calabar. Those are the Niger Delta states. It's a Kireland, Opopo, Calabar, and all the Niger Delta states. We'll talk about them later. But now. Wait, wait, um, wait, 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 Before we proceed, yeah, I think we have having challenges uh, of our network. I want you to go back to what you've been talking about. You okay. just repeat it again so that uh, our students can Yes, miss. yes. Okay. the network is, is, is breaking. Yeah, sure. Let, let me repeat. I'm saying, uh, Zimsek, June 2020, uh, uh, they asked the question why did Dao and the Niger Delta states uh, made an effective or were successful in making a transition from a uh, slave trade to legitimate trade? So, in other words, they were bringing us to the topic we are about. From slave trade to legitimate trade, they are still to make an effective transmission or that succeed in making the transition. What are those states we have got? Those that may, that were successful, number one is Daome. But Iwawa Gunyola is saying, don't go there and say Niger Delta states. So it's Calabar, it's a Kireland. Opopo on all, all those are what we call the Niger Delta states. So, and those that failed are Asante, for example, and also Boni failed. Now, the question is why did uh, you know some succeed and some fail? Maybe before I talk about solutions in general, let me contextualize so that our students can understand. Number one is the issue of good or you can say competent or you can say technocratic or you can say able Hello. leadership. Hello, Charlene. Yes. Charlene? yes. I think we're having challenges of network. Uh, I can't hear you clearly decide. You can hear me. Yes. Uh, your, your, your network is breaking there. Uh, let me check. Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, I think it's better now. So uh, you can go back again. Everything that we've been saying, it was not clear. Yes, I think it's now better. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was, I was saying uh, we have examples that money to make a successful transition. And that is But you know what say, Yako? Don't go and say, Niger, do the same. What are those Niger Delta states? We have Calabar, we have Itzekire Land, we have got Opopo, and right now we we want to know. And those that failed, we have got Asante, we have got Bon. They failed. But now the question is, why did those that fail fail, and why did those that succeed succeed? So we want to look at that. Number one, you we have got the issue of good. Or you can say competent, or you can say technocratic leadership. Right? A, the issue of leadership was very important from slave trade to legitimate trade. But it's not enough to say leadership without telling us the leadership of who and who. Right? So, Mr. Muso, a Daome was led by two good leaders, and these are Gezo and Gilele. But Gezo and Gilele in Daome, they had what we call the Daomian cabinet. And the, the, the Daomian cabinet, eh, 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 that's why some people believe that Daome exhibited a 21st century leadership. Why? Because there were many ministers. There was actually a minister of defense, a minister of agriculture, the Chokpe, the Migan, and all that. So the minister of agriculture in Daome started what we call a plant agriculture, whereby it is written in so many uh, books of his, such as Cambridge, of Africa, that 
He knew the number of legitimate crops that were grown in Dahomey. He knew uh, their number. He actually knew the number of livestock, the number of everything that was done in the, the number of people and all that. And they were doing what we call sustainable agriculture to make sure that the number of crops grown are supported by the number of to support that. So in Taome, they had what we call a good, effective leadership under the leadership of the two kings who presided over that state, that is Gezo and Glele. But below that, Gezo and Glele had a stratified cabinet, a stratified a leadership to help them in making the decisions, to help them in making the specific ministry of agriculture that actually, you know, helped them to make sure that there was sustainable agriculture. Are you still hearing me? Your, your network is still having challenges. I think we, you said it, 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 it was, it's raining that side, right? Yeah, it was raining, but I think, is it not your side? Because this side, I think I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, so, you, 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 this side, we can no longer hear you clearly this side. So we can save and start another one. Hello, Charlie. Can we save Can this you hear me? video and start another one? Uh, no, I think we're almost done. Uh, isn't we are talking about the last aspect uh, on legitimate trade, right? Yes, I was talking about the last EAA. -A -A. Yes, I, I think it's okay. So possibly communicating, uh, we are having challenges. Please forgive us. We are having challenges uh, with our network here. Uh, Mr. Charlene was talking about the last aspect uh, on legitimate uh, trade. He unpegged, he was telling us about what transpired during uh, the legitimate trade, and he managed to show us uh, what really uh, occurred during this particular period uh, of time. Mr. Charlene, I think, is back again. Possibly our network is going to be better now. Mr. Charlene, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you say loud and clear. It's excellent. So you were talking about the last aspect uh, on legitimate trade. Yes, let's see if it, I think it's now better. Okay. Yeah, I was talking about the last effect when I was saying there are states that managed to make an effective or that were successful in making the transition from slave trade to legitimate trade. And I gave an example of um, um, uh, the Daome, and I talked about uh, the Niger Delta states such as um, a Calabar, such as uh, Itzekireland and Opobo. Then I said, there are those that also failed to make that transition. And that is Asante, uh, the Boni, and others. But I was saying, why did those that succeeded manage to succeed? So I raised the point of good leadership. So I said, in, uh, in, in, in Daome, for instance, they were under the good leadership of Gezo and Gilele. Now, Gezo and Kilele, they also had a, a, a cabinet. We have got the Tope, the Megan, the Nye, and all that. These were ministers. There was a minister of agriculture, minister of defense, minister of all that. But specifically, I want to talk about the minister of agriculture. It, it is stated that the minister of agriculture knew like the number of legitimate crops that were grown, the number of livestock that was in the country, and all the farmers were registered, and he knew everything that was taking place in the state. So they made sure that their agriculture was sustainable to the extent that they planted or they were making sure that they were not growing more legitimate crops than the available resources. So that leadership was very sustainable, was very advanced, was very insightful, well informed, and it made Daome to actually make an effective transition from slave trade to legitimate trade because they enjoyed good leadership of Gezo and Kilele and the Dahomean cabinet, particularly the Minister of Agriculture, who was very sustainable in terms of how he was conducting himself in issues relating to agriculture. In, in, in the Niger Delta states, for example, in Opopo, there was a man called Jaja. Uh, some students, they know him as Jaja of Opopo. 
Why judge <laughs> Obobo? Because Obobo is a Obobo is a state. So he's called judge of Obobo because Obobo is a state. It's like saying Munangagwa of Zimbabwe. It's also say judge of Obobo because Obobo is a state. Now judge of Obobo and the was so don't don't go and say jar jamas jarasta or jamas. I know it's judge of Obobo. Um, and there was also a uh, Nana of Itsekire land. In Itsekire land, there was another one. Uh, called uh, Nana. Nana was in Ithekire land. Nana is, so Nana and Jaja, they were ex-slaves. So they have been into slavery. So they have been doing that plantation agriculture for a long time. So they knew what was happening and how to deal with how, uh, companies that were responsible for buying the slaves. So you can see that the good leadership that was in Daome of Jaja and Opobo, uh, the good leadership of the Daomean cabinet, but also in the Niger Delta states, two prominent men, Jaja of Obobo, Anna of Itsekire Land, they helped their states in making an effective transition from slave trade to legitimate trade, as opposed to arrogant kings like that of Boni, who said slaves are easy to catch than elephants, who was not prepared to make a transition. So those that failed, they failed on the issue of leadership. And those that succeeded, they succeeded because of good leadership, number one. Number two is proximity to the sea or rivers, or we can say close a distance to the sea. Now, or let's not say distance to the sea, let's say transport. Transport also was, a, was an advantage for the Niger Delta states. The Niger Delta states such as Calaba, such as Itsekire Land, such as a, 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 a Opobo, they were closer to the rivers. They were closer to the Niger, Niger River, the Niger River. They were closer to the Kwaobo River. And that made transportation so easier for them. So they managed to, to make a transition quickly from slave trade to legitimate trade. What about Daome? Daome was away from the sea, but they were very innovative to come up with a group of boys called the Pula Boys, who were responsible for carrying their goods from the inland area to the coast. And in that way, they managed to make an effective transition from slave trade to legitimate a, 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 a trade. And uh, yeah, the, so these are some of the effectors that can be talked about. But also, uh, in, in talking about that, those are some of the factors that you can talk about is why did the other states succeed and why did other uh, uh, states uh, fail? Oh, that is excellent, uh, Charlene. Well profound, well detailed about legitimate uh, trade. So I think legitimate trade, it was far better off than slave trade. Why? It is because the activities that occurred here, they were not as horrible as those that took place during the time of slave trade. All right, good, Charlene. Uh, is there anything else that you want to also uh, uh, say uh, on legitimate trade? Um, I think I think but, uh, I think I, I am done now. But uh, if the students have questions, they can always drop them on the page, and we can always come again. We are always available to come again as long as you invite me. I would say I always show up. Ah, good. Possibly, can we have possibly one or two practice questions that uh, come uh, on legitimate trade so that students can use those practice questions to apply to what you have been uh, teaching us today? Yes. A, a, a first question, I think I would say, why did slave trade continue up to the mid-19th century? Why okay. did the slave trade continue up to the mid 19th century? It's a All question. Right, good. Or they can say, yes, number one, or they can say, lack of a substitution was the main obstacle in the abolition of slave trade. How far do you agree? Lack of a substitution oh, okay. was the main, main obstacle. In the abolition of slave trade, how far do you agree? 
Oh, that is excellent, nice. Charlene. Charlene, I want to thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank you so much for unpacking, justifying as we've been justifying us uh, today on slave trade, slavery, uh, and also legitimate trade. But possibly before we end our session, you are writing, or I think you are done with your book. So I think you can tell us uh, more about your book. I know this topic, slave trade, slavery, will be there. So can you possibly share us with your book uh, that you have uh, written <laughs> on European history and also regional Africa? Well, uh, thanks very much, Mr. Muso. It's very true. We are bringing a, a new book that is going to be very powerful. Um, we are just finishing editing it, and there are a lot of uh, great minds just like you who are helping us to make it as good as it can. We managed to take feedback from our students who were crying to say, we want these topics, we want things to be like we listened to them, but we also listened to the teachers who were pressing it upon us to say, the new curriculum is here. What can be done to make sure that we have got books? So yes, I wrote a book. The book is called The Spanner, Volume 1. Why is it called The Spanner? You know, The Spanner is for unlocking all the tight bolts and you unlock them, and you can also use them to tighten them. So we are saying The Spanner is meant to make sure that we unlock all the difficult um, our topics. The Spanner, Volume 1, is going to be very powerful. It's actually a shifting spanner. A shifting spanner, you can shift it to unlock anything. It can be two, it can be three, it can be four. So what are the topics uh, <laughs> that are in that book? Uh, I wrote yeah. a first topic was about um, causes of the French Revolution. I typed on the cause of the French Revolution. I think the book has got around 40-something pages on the cause of the French Revolution, from influence of the philosophers, Asian regime, from the background of the French Revolution, from Louis XV, which touched in the social classes, everything. The causes are there, and you practice questions, not only for the old curriculum, but activities as well. We also touched on the course of the French Revolution from the National Assembly, Legislative Assembly, um, uh, National Convention, the Directory. Uh, from there, I touched on the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte, what are the factors that led to the rise of Napoleon, the domestic policy, the foreign policy of Napoleon Bonaparte, the downfall of Napoleon Bonaparte. Then I touched on the Vienna uh, settlement. Of course, I have a song. Um, uh, we, because I want to produce an audio book and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a book so that those who want to listen can listen. So I, I'm going to put a song like, Oh, Vienna Congress, oh, Vienna Congress, legitimacy, Congress, liberalism, Congress, nationalism, Congress, nationalism, Congress, French aggression, Congress, French aggression, so that our people can be able to, you know, remember the principles of the Vienna uh, settlement. I also tied on the Congress uh, uh, system from the Kwawale Alliance, the Kwadrapa. I was already dancing on the song. I was already dancing on, on, on the song. Eh? Dancing <laughs> on the song. It's a powerful one. Congress, yeah. yeah it's Congress. <laughs> the Jesusistic dance. <laughs> uh, we, so we, we, we also touched um, on the Congress system where I touched on uh, uh, the, 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 the Holy Alliance. The, the Quadrapo Alliance, the Congress of Tropao, the Tropao Protocol. We also tied on issues to do with the Ferrari, St. Peter's, all those we tied on, they are in the book. We tied, of course, on the restored Bourbon Monarch in France, where I was touching on Louis the 18th and Charles X. We looked at what are the issues that what led to their rise. We looked at all that. We, but then slave trade and legitimate trade, I put it also as chapter 10 because I wanted it to be there since it's now section A. So slave and trade and legitimate trade is there, is right there, and people will enjoy the book. So I want to launch the book, actually. I want to do a very good launch to send buses to take students from the rural areas. Then we address them. So it's going to be difficult. Very soon we'll be notifying the country when we are launching the, the book. Oh, fantastic. That is powerful, my Charlene. That is excellent. Uh, congratulations for, for such a, uh, a good work that you are doing. So I think uh, for today, we have done enough. We have done justice uh, to this topic, slave trade and legitimate trade. Once again, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Bless you. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Musso.
it's such a great honor always to be here cross pollinating ideas with you remember you took us when we were very young i remember you took me to present my first seminar when i was 17 years old and i was afraid and i could stand in front of the people i could speak any english uh, good sentence or anything but uh, you took me with a very young age you introduced me to the people you gave me an opportunity to present in the capital city when it was not fashionable to do so you took me to mashingo i have traveled the whole country now be it chief be it everywhere through your name thank you very much for that and keep mentoring many more um they've done a great job i think we all all you you are a good example of what leadership is all about the ability to pass the stick and mentor other young teachers so thanks very much father i appreciate every time you invite me here be it for fris be it for history i will always be available thank you so much have a blessed day thank you